31, covering second base. David, I got steel. James, I'll back you up. Communication is the key to a team's success on the field. Whether it's calling for a fly ball or deciding who's going to cover second base on a steal. The shortstop is the captain of the infield. He should be the one to direct his teammates in the field. Youth teams should keep things simple and always have the shortstop take the throw on a steal and have the second baseman back him up. An important teaching point for defending against the steal is to encourage communication between the shortstop and second baseman before the play, David, so there steel. are no mix-ups. The shortstop and second baseman should address each other by name to avoid confusion with other teammates. David, Practicing good up. communication will make Go. a team better defensively. 32. Football toss. Many times in youth baseball, it is difficult for young players to understand the concept of leading a teammate to the base with a throw. For example, if there's a runner at first base and a ground ball is hit to shortstop, the second baseman must cover second base for the force play. The shortstop must lead the second baseman to the base with an accurate toss of the baseball for the out. A great drill to teach this fundamental is to practice with a football. Many youth players will understand a concept in one sport and then apply it to another. Coaches should be encouraged to illustrate the concept in the other sport before relating it to the sport they're playing. In football, many players understand the concept of the quarterback leading the receiver with a pass. If the shortstop and the second baseman can better visualize the concept of leading the other with a football toss to the base, then they will eventually grasp the same concept when using a baseball. Leading the fielder or throwing to the base is very important in baseball and a skill that players will use at all levels of the game. You don't want to have fielders covering the base have to reach for the ball or leave the base to make the catch. Leading one another is very important because it helps prevent unnecessary runs from scoring. Players should feel comfortable tossing the ball to an empty base. Someone will be there to cover. Baseball is a game of timing, and the shortstop and second baseman must work on their timing with this important leading drill. 33. Relays. On a ball hit to right field, the second baseman will run out and take the cutoff throw from the right fielder. The second baseman must form an imaginary line from the base he intends to throw to, to the right fielder. The shortstop should be directing the second baseman as he runs out for the relay. The cutoff man should provide the outfielder with a big target. He should have his arms raised while yelling cutoff. On a ball hit to left field, the shortstop becomes the cutoff man as the second baseman covers second base. The second baseman should now guide the shortstop so that he is directly between the left fielder and second base for an easy throw. Hitting the cutoff man is extremely important on all levels of baseball and cannot be overpracticed. It shortens the throws from the outfield and prevents opponents from taking extra bases. 34. Third base cutoff ground ball. Sometimes on a slow ground ball hit toward the shortstop, it may be more beneficial for the third baseman to cut in front of the shortstop to feel the ball the third baseman's momentum will be moving toward first base, which will yield a stronger, more accurate throw than the shortstop, who would have to pivot and throw. The shortstop should not stand idly by while the third baseman cuts in front of him. He should be ready to field the ball if the third baseman overruns or misses the ball. Practicing a play like this will force players into being more aggressive in the field. 35. Third baseman on bunt. Another important responsibility of the third baseman is to charge toward the batter if he squares to bunt. Once the batter squares, he must begin to charge. The third baseman must also be careful if the batter squares to bunt and then brings the bat back to swing. In this case, the third baseman should recognize the situation, stop charging, and quickly backpedal into his original position. When fielding a bunt, the third baseman can either use his glove hand or non-glove hand, depending on how slow the ball was bunted. 
On a slow bunt, the third baseman can save time by picking up the ball with his bare hand. On a ball bunted hard down the third base line, he can field it with his glove. In both scenarios, the third baseman must transition into a throwing position quickly. 36. Wheel play. When a batter squares to bunt, the third baseman charges in. If there's a runner on second base at the time, the shortstop must rotate over and cover third base. If the catcher or third baseman receives the bunt in time, then they could try to throw out the lead runner. This play must be practiced before utilizing it in a game. 37. Rundowns, one throw. There are numerous theories about how to teach rundowns to players 10, 11, and 12 years old. Coach Marty Shupak has been most successful when he teaches his players to try to only make one throw when they have a player in a rundown. We do not want to give too many things for the players to think about, such as throwing lanes or running the base runners back to the base they came from. Players should try to get the out, but should do so on one throw if possible. And of course, have your team practice rundowns between each base and make sure outfielders get involved coming near the infield to back up. 38. Ball tag. Many youth fielders receive the ball and wait for the base runner to come to them before applying the tag. They also tend to tag the base runner high on the body or in the thigh area, which usually allows the base runner's foot to reach the base safely before any tag. This ball tag drill is a great way to emphasize the correct way to apply the tag. A coach rolls a large rubber ball toward a base. A fielder stands over the base and waits to receive a throw from his teammate in order to tag the large rubber ball before it reaches safely to the base. This drill reinforces the idea of applying the tag low and near the base before the object reaches safely. The ball rolls quickly to the base, so the fielder must be quick and accurate with his tag which means he cannot lunge at the ball as if he were going to apply a tag on a runner's thigh. Every player should get an opportunity at performing this drill. Coaches can work their way up to having players applying tags on real base runners. 39. Fielding pitcher. It is extremely important that the pitcher realizes he has a responsibility to field as well as pitch. After his delivery, he should be in a position to field the ball. Proper pitching mechanics will force a pitcher to be squared to home plate in a ready fielding position that is balanced. Pitchers should also know where to throw the ball if a ball is hit back to him. Many times a ball is hit back to the pitcher and he'll automatically throw to first base when he could have thrown out the lead runner. If there is a runner on second base and the ball is hit back to the pitcher, the pitcher should check the runner to see if he has a play. If the base runner has taken off for third base, the pitcher can throw the ball to the third baseman or run and tag him out on his way to third. The pitcher can also run the base runner back to the base he came from. These are very common plays in games but are rarely practiced. 40. Passed ball. Almost every youth baseball game has passed balls or wild pitches. However, coaches rarely take the time in practice to review ways to safeguard against further damage, especially if there's a base runner on third trying to score. Practicing will enable pitchers to get used to covering home plate and learning how to apply the tag on the runner. Practicing also enables the catcher to get used to recovering the baseball and tossing it correctly to the pitcher covering home. Once the pitcher realizes the ball went by the catcher, he should run home and cover the plate, directing the catcher to the ball. The catcher should toss the ball low and to the third base corner side of the plate. The pitcher should put his glove in between the runner and the plate so that the runner has no angle to the plate and can only slide into his glove. 